It definitely does benefit fleet vehicles. I, I think it's kind of an initial step to improving the emissions profile and efficiency for a large government fleet possibly that had, you know, they've already made a significant investment in these vehicles. They haven't reached the point where they need to be decommissioned. So the, the propane or natural gas conversion is an attractive option because you can spend 1500 bucks per, per vehicle, have a demonstrated improvement in emissions and little to no loss in power at that point. So it's a way of greening a vehicle that maybe wasn't designed as such. And, uh, but here again, I, I wouldn't buy a new vehicle and with the mindset of, hey, this would be a great natural gas conversion because that there's other ways to go at that point where you could achieve similar emissions and miles per gallon um, efficiencies without going through the headache of a conversion. The natural gas is under much higher pressure. Um, so there's some additional um, wiring things that need to be done with that. There's also, um, an emulator that needs to be installed that um, works in conjunction with your engine management unit to basically fool the engine into thinking it's getting normal petroleum rather than this compressed natural gas into the system. So th there's certain things that almost need to be done just to trick the engine so it continues to work properly, it, which it can. It just, it's not programmed to run on natural gas. So there's just certain steps that need to be taken to get the engine um, basically situated to work with that type of incoming fuel source.